Waffle charts are a great way to visualise categorical data, and they're aesthetically pleasing, and in my opinion, much better than looking at pie charts. So one of the key things about data visualisation is to ensure that your message gets across to your reader in the most effective way possible, and waffle charts can allow you to do that. Waffle charts are essentially square or rectangular displays that are made up of smaller squares or components that form a grid, and categories can then be represented across that grid depending on their portion and contribution to the overall picture. So in this example here, we can see that we've got lithology data for two different wells, and each of the waffle charts here represent 100% of the composition. And then we can see that that composition is broken down into shale, sandstone, sandstone shale, etc. And each of these cells represents 1% of the overall picture. So you can see that we've got shale, which is the most dominant. And then when we compare it to the second well, we can see that the shale is less dominant in that particular well. So right away, we can understand the overall picture and variation between these two wells. We can use waffle charts for a number of different things, including visualising progress towards a goal, understanding how individual parts like this one make up, the, make up an overall picture or the whole, and if you're in the accounting world, we can even see how much expenses are eating into overall gross profit. As with any data visualisation, there are always advantages and disadvantages to displaying data in specific formats, and waffle charts are no exception. So waffle charts provide a nice alternative to the traditional pie chart, where in a pie chart data can become distorted as we're looking at angles rather than areas, and this can cause confusion with the reader. So with a waffle chart, we are representing the data in a grid form, which is much easier to interpret. They're also interesting and different to look at compared to the traditional pie chart, which can also catch the attention of the reader. And they're a great way to visualize a small number of categories, which is similar to a pie chart. You don't want to overload it with categories, otherwise it becomes very, very difficult to read. It can also be difficult to compare non-adjacent categories, but that's the same with most charts. As with bar charts, categories can be separated uh, quite a bit on the, on the x-axis, or with a pie chart, they can be the opposite side of the pie chart. So let's see how we can create our waffle charts using PyWaffle and Matplotlib. So the first thing that we're going to do is import some of the libraries we're going to be working with. In this case, we're going to be importing pandas as PD, which will be used to create our data frame. And then we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And you may notice that we've got another import here. Now matplotlib can be used to create waffle charts. However, this library called pywaffle makes this process much simpler. So let's import these. And we're going to create some fake data basically to work with. So here we've got two wells worth of data and we've got some numbers associated with those wells and those numbers correspond to percentages of lithology. So we've got shale, sandstone, sandstone shale, chalk, limestone, marl and tuff and each of these has varying percentages. And then we're just going to create that or pass that into a data frame and if we call upon our data frame now, so if we call upon lif underscore data df, we now see that we've got our standard data frame that we're familiar with. We're going to create some colors. So I've already pre-populated these uh, just to make things easier rather than you watching me type out hexadecimal values for colors. Next, we need to create some labels. So rather than including labels within the pie waffle chart, we can create them here in a list and we will then use them within the legend just to make it much easier to visualize and understand uh, rather than having too much text on the screen. So we can call upon plot labels just to see what that looks like. So we can see that for our wells, we've got shale and the percentage. So we're just doing well one in this case. We will do the same for well two later on. So next we need to create our waffle chart and we can do this by calling upon plt.figure. So we're, we are calling upon matplotlib and we're going to pass in a new argument or a new parameter called figure class. And then we pass in our waffle class that we imported up at the beginning. So this creates our waffle chart in the background so we don't need to worry about the grid or uh, other various parameters of a waffle chart and how to set it up. This does it for us automatically. Uh, we're going to set the number of rows equal to five and we'll set the columns equal to 20. So we're going to have 20 columns 
by five rows, which gives us our hundred boxes. Then we need to pass in the values. So we can call upon values and we'll pass in a list of our values. And we'll call upon our lift data frame. Now we could have just done this from a list. When we're working with data, we commonly have it within a pandas data frame. So I'm just going down this route, but you can equally pass in a list. So we could actually use the original dictionary here and just pass in that per particular list of values for that well. And I'll call upon well one, as that's the data that we're going to be using. Then I'm going to set the colors equal to colors. Now notice the spelling and colors is on the left is American here, and then colors is what we use in British English. So there's a slight difference, just in case you're, you're wondering. And then we'll set the labels, and we'll set that equal to our plot labels that we created above. And then we need to create our legend. So this is what's going to appear at the bottom of our figure to tell the user what each color represents and what the percentage value is for each of those lithologies. So we just need to pass in a dictionary of a few parameters. So we've got lock, which is our location, and we'll set this to the lower center. And we'll also set the bounding box and we'll set that to anchor and we'll then pass in the location for that bounding box. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 0 0.5 by minus 0 0.8. And that will just put it at the bottom of our figure. Now you can play around with that if you want to position it, say, above the figure to the right of it. Uh, it's just a case of changing these numbers. Then we need to call upon n call, which is our number of columns for our, um, our legend. And we're going to set this to three so that we've got three columns. And then finally, we've got our font size and we'll set that equal to 12 pixels. So now we've got our figure set up, we can then call upon plt.show plt and we get back our figure. So you'll notice that we've got quite a small figure here with a large legend. We can sort that by calling upon fig size and we set that equal to 10 by 10 in this instance and we get a much bigger waffle chart so we can see right away that we've got 61 percent as shale 12 columns of five which gives us 60 and then an extra one gives us our 61 percent now you may notice if you are using numbers that have decimal values, you may need to play around with the rounding, whether you round up or you round down or you round to the nearest. But if you do that, you have to bear in mind that the boxes that are on the waffle chart may not correspond to the actual values just due to how that rounding has been done. So right away, we can see the contribution of each lithology to the overall composition of that particular well. So by default, we are coloring in from the bottom left box here. So we can easily just swap that around so that when we want to color this or start our data from, we can just call upon the starting location, starting location, and we set that equal to Northwest. So it will start in the Northwest or the top left corner. So here we are, we've just flipped it around and that's how we can control whether we're starting up here or down here. And you can equally do the Northeast and Southeast as well. So now that we've got the first well done, we can equally apply this to the second well. So if I copy and paste this and then take the column uh, well two from our data frame, we can now see the difference in composition for this well compared to the one above. And we're using the same starting location, so we're comparing the same data. So we could easily do this for each well within our data frame if we have more wells, but we can start to combine this together into a single figure if we want. And that's just done using subplots. So now it gets a little bit messy. So if I take my figure size, uh, move it down a couple of rows, we now need to define where our plots are. So if I say plots and we'll set that equal to, and we're using subplots here. So we're using location, we've got two plots and this is number one, it's one column, and we're in the first row. So once we've done that, we then need to pass in our dictionary. So, so rather than having this values row down here, we can put this into this dictionary here. So we can say values, and we can take what we've got here. So let's cut that out and paste it in here. We change that into a key, so a string, and we're going to set that to be the list. And we'll set this one to be well number one. 
So we can then set our labels and we'll set that equal to plot labels. But if we do that, you'll notice that our two wells, you can see here already that uh, I've made a mistake in our plot labels, that we can see that we've got 61% and 61%, but this doesn't match up with the figure here. So we need to create our labels on the fly for each of our wells. And we can do that by copying the code that we've got up here. Uh, we can we can actually just put it in here just to to uh, make sure we've got the right code. So if I change that over to well two and run that a minute or two to run, and we just need to change that over to labels, and there we have it. So now we've got the actual percentages for each of these groups. So we can apply that same logic here. So rather than having plot underscore labels, we can apply our little list comprehension that we've done and put that directly within this dictionary. So let's just put that on a new line so we've got it tidied up. Then we need to put in our legend. So it, the legend is going to be different for each one. So these values here are going to reflect each uh, going to reflect the overall figure so we need to set that to reflect the individual subplot so if i take this and we can take the legend out of here so we take the yeah so if we take the legend from here and we will paste that in here and we just change that over to a string and instead of an equals, we need a colon. So now we're passing it to this, this uh, dictionary here. And finally, we need to set the title. So title, and we'll set this as label. And then we just say what it is. So in this case, so in this case, I'm going to say, well, one lithology composition and we can set the font size equal to 18. So this is a, this is a dictionary, so we need a colon. We'll set that to 18. Great. So now, so now we need to move on to 212. So we can copy what we've got here. So this one, we'll set this to well number two, and we'll set that to two, and well number two here. And we just need to change some of these values. So where the, the legend is going to show. In this case, I'm going to set this to 0 0.5. And we'll set this the same. So that it is relative to the individual subplot. Now, I think that is everything. So we've got the fig size. We've got the colors. We've got the labels. So we don't need this labels uh, row here. We'll take out this comma here. And let's hope that this will work. Ah, so we've missed a comma. Okay. Ah, I'm using a comma instead of a colon. But the same here, because we're obviously working within a dictionary. Uh, okay, so let me just check what we've got, what's missing. So all I was missing was a comma down here. And uh, when we run that, we can now see that we've got our, our waffle charts, however, it's a little bit messy, so we just need to clean that up. So we'll set the figure size to 15 by 10, so that we've got them uh, the right size. And then we just need to set some of the parameters within the legend. So set the location to center left, and also this one to center left. So that will put our legend over on the right hand side of our figure. Uh, for each of the wells, we can see that the labels correspond to what we've got in each of these wells in terms of percentages. So just to tidy this up a little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to change the number of columns over here uh, to one, and we'll also reduce the font size down to 10 pixels. So now we have our final figure. There are probably a few other things we could do to tidy this up, such as reducing the spacing or just changing it around slightly. So if you've enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.